Coming up on today's Locked On Senators, we're joined by a former senator, now ESPN St. Louis radio host, Jamie Rivers. We get into some classic Sens nostalgia as he tells us about playing with a young Alfie, Andre Waugh, and a young Zidane Chara as well. And also great Jacques Martin story. So you want to hear all that. Plus, over the last number of years, heck, his entire career, he's gotten to see the growth of Vladimir Tarasenko. So some really interesting insight onto that. All of it's coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. Your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 852 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, please like and subscribe wherever you download your podcasts. We are also available on YouTube where the road to 10,000. Yes, we are going to get to 10,000 one day, Pilsy. But today is Friday, August 4th. And Pilsy, you know what? I'm going to ask everyone as a birthday wish to me to go like and subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Yes, Ross, that is a great birthday wish. That was my birthday wish this year as well. Uh, and many people uh, gave me the gift of a subscription, a like, a comment. So for Ross's birthday, please do the same. And happy birthday, buddy. Well, your your 30s are chugging along here. Yeah, 30 was a lot cooler than 31. But Pilsy, hey, congratulations <laughs> to you as well. Now a homeowner. We've got a busy couple, couple weeks here on the podcast with my wedding coming up in just over a week as well. But that doesn't mean any less of the show Pilsy. this is honestly an interview i didn't expect much of and he's an absolute beauty this was awesome i think people are really going to enjoy it yeah i, I was stoked to, to talk to jamie we've kind of had him on our list uh guest wish list for quite a while and it's great we finally got the chance to talk to him especially with the vladimir tarasenko uh story um kind of intertwining it worked out great I think that the key, Pilsy, and something we can narrow in on sometimes and uh, free idea to those who are, you know, starting podcasts or whatever, former players that have experience in radio or TV, they've just got the perfect mix of being able to express their stories, their ideas so succinctly, so well. They're great storytellers, but also have the lived experience of being able to have these great stories. Yeah, and like these guys have probably hashed out and told these stories multiple times, right? Like, so for them, it's just like, oh, uh, insert hit play on Jacques Martin's story. Let's go. And uh, they nail it every time. So an absolute blast, especially Ross. The best storytellers, uh, as far as hockey goes, two answers. Backup goalies and tough guys. Best storytellers for sure. They certainly are. And I mean, Jamie Rivers, also a good Ottawa boy. We'll get to that in the interview a bit, but he tries to come back every year. His brother still lives up on the Ottawa River. So uh, rivers, where the rivers meet. Uh, that's where the rivers meet, the family. But uh, I think <laughs> nice. that's because there is a little story coming up about uh, his brother with Jacques Martin. But um, and not much going on in Sensland right now in terms of we're still waiting for some pin to drop, whether it's the Shane Pinto contract extension, the money that will be freed up to make that happen with Ottawa being so close up against the salary cap right now. But it has to happen sooner or later. Pierre Dorian was on NHL Network last week. Uh, we've confirmed that his burner account is anonymous on Twitter. We've confirmed that he loves poutine but hasn't eaten three at a time ever. It was really just a, a fun, easy talking interview. Not much news to break other than just being excited that Vladimir Tarasenko is the senator. Well, hopefully we get some news next week. Well, we will find out more about Vladimir Tarasenko coming up. What do you say we get to this interview? It's going to span basically the rest of the show. We had so much fun. Classic, hey, 12 to 15 minutes, bang, 25 minutes later, we uh, we wrap up. But yeah, if you like Chara stories, you like Alfredson stories, you'll want to stay tuned. That's next. You're listening to Locked on Senators. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel, the trusted online sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network, America's number one sportsbook, not a big deal. And you can take your first swing at betting on MLB on FanDuel and get 
10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. You heard it. So just 20 bucks and you can land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's the key. All on an app that's safe, secure, super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you don't have to wait around. You get that you get that money instantly. Those green numbers into your account always feels good. So there's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel. You got to sign up today. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. We're hooking you guys up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Today's episode is also brought to you by Shawarma Palace. Visit any of Shawarma Palace's seven locations in Ottawa today. Honestly, if I was in town, I would ask for a Shawarma Palace platter, just stick a candle in it and call it a birthday because that is the most delicious way to fulfill yourself in Ottawa. You get the garlic potatoes, you get the fresh salad, the pickled turnips, you get all of it perfectly packaged where there isn't a, a speck of oxygen left when they close this thing. They fill it up as much as they, they really do. The hummus, the, the olive oil with the little paprika in there. It is so carefully crafted. You can tell why they've been the best place to go in Ottawa for shawarma since 1997. Jamie Rivers hadn't even gotten to Ottawa by 1997. Shawarma Palace was slinging platters way back when. They're still doing it now. So check out all their seven locations. Find them on Instagram, Shawarma Palace Ottawa, and find them on Uber Eats exclusively to get it delivered right to you. When you go, make sure you let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. It's the best and only place to go for shawarma in Ottawa. Huge Sens fans, make sure that your next meal is at Shawarma Palace. So whether you're a guy or girl, make sure you eat like royalty at Shawarma Palace. Do it now. Do it next. Do it. To make sure your hunger goes away. Visit them at Shawarma Palace at any of their seven Ottawa locations. All right, now let's get to our interview with former Senators defenseman turned broadcaster. Here is Jamie Rivers. All right, we now welcome on a very, very special guest. This Ottawa native was a third round draft pick into the National Hockey League where he spent time with seven different teams, including your Ottawa Senators. After his playing career, he's now transitioned to the media side where you can now find him on ESPN Radio in St. Louis where he covers the Blues. Jamie Rivers, welcome to Locked On Senators. Thank you for joining us, sir. Yeah, thanks for having me, boys. A bit of an honor. You know, I've been wanting to get on this podcast for a while, so I better play it right. Oh, tire pumps going both ways, Phil. <laughs> this is a great start, man. No, we were looking it up, and I know it was a short time that you spent with the Ottawa Senators, but how cool was it getting to play for your hometown team? I got to start there. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. It really was. And, like, that's at the start of the 2000s. Like, we had a powerhouse team, too. Yeah. We had Yashin, Alfredson, Hosa, Havlat. I mean, it was just a great group of dudes. Um, and, and I was actually an unrestricted free agent kind of sitting at home at that point. That's what guys did. You didn't take the PTO back then. Right. You waited it out because your agent would tell you, don't take a PTO. Then you go to camp, you get hurt, you don't know. So the strategy back then was sit at home until somebody has an injury or they figure out that they're not good enough and they go to sign a guy who's you know ready and able to go. So I got the call from Marshall Johnston just after the season had been I just started and you guys had a bunch of injuries on the blue line. Sammy Salo went down and I forget who else, maybe Carl Rakunik went down and Marshall called me and said, hey, would you like to come play in Ottawa? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's my hometown and the team is really good. You know, I thought it was a system I could play in very well. Uh, so I did. I signed the contract, got to Ottawa. And then here's a funny story about my first week in Ottawa is, you know, sometimes the GM they go and sign a guy and the coach talks to the GM a little bit, but not a lot. And just a lot of moving parts in some of these signings. Right. Well, I remember the very first day I saw Jacques Martin, he comes over and he's, you know, gives me the standard welcome to the team. We're happy to have you. And he goes, you're a lot, you're a lot bigger than I thought you were. And I was like, Oh, okay. I said, well, maybe, you know, I'm sitting there wondering, I've yeah. been six one for years now. Um, I, I haven't changed a whole lot in the last, well, I don't know, six years, but I can't, I kind of let it slide. Um, and then he comes up to me later on that day. You can tell it's still kind of eating at him and I don't know what's eating at him, but he skates over and he goes, uh, how did you like St. Lawrence? And so Jacques Martin went to St. Lawrence university okay. and, um, so did my brother. So now at this point it clicks to me. He thinks I'm my brother. Oh, no. 
yeah, he thinks he signed my brother, Sean. And my brother, <laughs> Sean, played pro hockey, played in the NHL, had a cup of coffee with the Tampa Bay Lightning. But here's the funny part of it is my brother's like 5'9". Yeah. And he's a speedster. So this is why Jacques was so perplexed. He was like looking over thinking that like Sean Rivers had a growth spurt or something. Anyways, I, I looked at him. I said, oh, Jacques I said, I, I didn't go to St. Lawrence. I said, I, I thought it's an awesome school. My brother went there and he's like, oh, OK. All right. Well, great to have you. I was like, <laughs> I was like All right. This is going well. <laughs> You're yeah. up 120 points in Sudbury. <laughs> Yeah, yes, you're right. Those are some pretty good times. That's before the days of the internet and a quick uh, Google search uh, <laughs> could have done uh, Jacques a lot of good there, I guess. That's hilarious. Um, now, you mentioned a bunch of uh, all-star players that you played with on that Sens team, but uh, I, I got to get, uh, hopefully you have a couple stories about a guy we loved having on our show. Do you have any good Andre Waugh stories? I mean, that guy is absolutely <laughs> hilarious. When he came on the show, we were just laughing so much. So I hope you got uh, one for us here. He oh, might, Jamie, he might, uh, I don't think this is where you're going to go. He told us from junior, but he started a bench clearing brawl in a shootout. I said, what are you doing taking a shot in a shootout, Andre? Were they on the 18th <laughs> side? <laughs> yeah. Wazi was pretty good though. I will yeah. say this, like he could skate, he could shoot, he could hit, uh, you know, hardest part for Andre was sometimes with the, not the hockey sense part of it, but I loved having Andre as a teammate. Like, yeah. for, let's go back a little bit because Andre and I played against each other in the minors first. Okay. He was he was Boston's property. I was St. Louis's property. And so Worcester and Providence, like 40 minutes apart, we had this like crazy AHL rivalry. And so Wazi would run around all the time. We had some guys too, and I'd be running around. And honestly, like we hated each other. <laughs> we like hated each other's guts. And so you know, walk into the locker room. And of course, Andre's a big personality and he comes over right away. makes me feel right at home. I mean, obviously hockey players, right? Like what happened yesterday when you played against each other means nothing now that you're teammates. Yeah. And so he was great. And, you know, he was, he was, he was our tough guy, you know, and, and I give him so much credit because that was a time of like knuckle draggers, like just mutants in that, in the NHL. And Andre Wall was really tough, but he wasn't like a, George LaRock or, a, you know, a Donald Brashear, but he, he, but he fought those guys all the time. And so, you know, mad props to, to, to Andre for doing that. But a funny thing that Andre used to do was he could make this high pitch bonging sound with his hmm. voice. I, I don't even know how he'd do it. Like the bong, like, but I don't know how he did it. And so we'd get on the plane every now and then. And, you know, you hear guys pushing the thing to get the, the service, the stewardess to come over and maybe a juice or water, some food, whatever it is. Well, then Wazi, I don't know if he'd had a couple of wobbly pops in him or not. He'd start to hit the high pitch. Bong, and you'd see the stewardess like walking from the back, but then trying to find, you know, where the light is, like who's pushing the button. <laughs> yeah. And so they'd get back to the front and hear and he'd turn around again. He'd run him back for it. And Halfway through, he'd be like, over and back. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then the stewards would catch on, and then they'd go over and get mad at him. But uh, he was hilarious. He had a lot of comedic relief. Yeah. He was a talented guy, man. He could play the guitar. He could sing. Uh, yeah, he's pretty. He's a fun guy to have around the locker room, that's for sure. Man, just the names on, on this this uh, this roster from the, the year you played your full season with the Senators. And we always ask the same question to anyone who played with Daniel Alfredson. Did you ever get the puck off his stick and keep away? Hmm. Well, Alfie, no, that guy was a nightmare. I mean, he had the legs the size of tree trunks, and he could handle the puck so well. And every time you went to get it from him, he could just protect it. And I, I think that's one thing that gets overlooked so much about Daniel Alfredson is just how strong he was. You know, like he wasn't a physically imposing guy and his upper body was normal, but his lower half, his lower body, his center of gravity, I mean, it was powerful. And so every time you try to get the puck from him, he would just, you know, move enough to protect the puck. And then obviously his hands and his skills were so good that even if you got lucky to kind of get around the puck protection, he would just dangle you with the stick skills. So, yeah, he was frustrated. Those guys were so frustrating in practice. I, I, I'm going to take you into the, the my brain here for a second. <laughs> Here I am, I'm like a six, seven defenseman on this team, and I've got to go out there every practice and earn my spot. We had a hell of a blue line. And once everybody was healthy, it was like a battle of the best to try and stay in the lineup. I got to go out there and practice every day against Havlat, Hosa, Bonk, Yashin, Alfredson, 
all of these guys who can handle the puck so well and make you look like an ass in a heartbeat. So you go out there the first couple of times and you're trying to just go, you know, stick on puck, just kind of maybe body on body. Like I'm not here to, to hurt anybody. It's my damn team. Then they'd make you look like an ass. And then you'd get frustrated. And then I remember getting angry, like then going after guys like Haas and just like finishing them just hard enough, you know, to kind of look back at you and be like, yeah, I'm not happy right now. Send a message. I'm yeah. not happy. Take it down a notch. Take the toe drag over there to Shane Knighty or Wade. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Hey, when when uh, when I look back on this too, uh, the the final question I had from uh, from your year in Ottawa too is, you know, Alexi Ashen had that unbelievable year, finished second in Hart Trophy. Speaking of asses, uh, maybe I could say uh, doesn't play, <laughs> doesn't play the next year. Like, what was the conversation like? I know you came back just for those two games at the start of the next season, but what was the mood like around Alexi Ashen and that whole dra- drama surrounding his presence? So that was weird because Alexi actually sat out the year before I got there. And so when I got there, it was like his first year back and he all of a sudden decided, Oh, I want to play. And, but we knew what he was doing. It was a contract year mm-hmm. pretty much. And he put up like amazing, I think he had 40 goals that year. And he was a moose. Like there were some games where you're like one against three, I've got my money on Yashin right <laughs> now. And I think that's what pissed guys off the most is that, the ability was there yeah. and, and Yash, like in a bubble, he was a great dude. Honestly, he was like, he'd go out to dinner and whatnot and he would love to laugh and you could make fun of him. And it was, you know, it, it was fine. There was no tension at all, but then, you know, you see the outside noise that, or the obvious things where certain games, he's kind of not there that year in the playoffs was frustrating against the Maple Leafs. I still, I still have nightmares of that because we should have pounded those guys and we yeah. didn't and we didn't. And you know what? That's as much on me as, as anybody else. But, you know, a guy like Yash at that time, you know, I thought he could have fought through some things. I thought he could have brought his game to a, another level. He didn't. And that's fine. You know, I, I'm sitting here. It's just my opinion. Um, but, you know, then he went on to sign that crazy, insane right. deal, which, by the way, you know what? Let's just be honest. Alexei Yashin helped the Senators win a lot of hockey games, put them on the map, and then he really helped the Ottawa Senators yeah. by being traded to the Islanders. You yeah, got yeah. Zdeno Chara and, and Billy McCall back. Well, and, the, and Spezza. And Spezza, that's right. Right there. And uh, I heard you're a big Mike Milbury guy, so you probably love that from that standpoint as well. We talk. We, we got some sources in here. Oh, man. Mike Milbury. Oh, boy. Interesting dude. We'll just, you know, we'll leave it there. I mean, there's, there were some moments where – he and I clashed a little bit and I think I was just most sour on the way it ended there for me because yeah. I had one of my most productive seasons in the NHL. I kind of, you know, I, when I started in St. Louis, not that I was in the shadows of these great players, but I was like, we had Pronger, we had Steve Duchesne, we had Al McKinnis. Like they didn't need an offensive minded young defenseman. I was basically told go out there, play physical and we'll see how much ice time we can get you. So then when I was put on waivers and I got picked up by the Islanders, you know, Mike kind of said, Hey, look, I, I, I like the way you play. You kind of run around out there. You hit hard. He, you know, he's like, we need that on this team. We need some energy. And so I thought, okay, this is great. I played a ton that year, played a lot of hockey, uh, felt like it played very well. Some games was 25, 26 minutes a game. We didn't have a great team, but then following the season, you know, Mike had just said, Hey, look, you know, where do you see yourself on this team next year? And I was like, well, I see myself competing for a top four spot. Like, that's the goal. And yeah. he didn't like the answer. He's like, well, I see you as a five, six. And I'm like, well, I don't. I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm happy with a five, six. Like, that's basically admitting that I'm not good enough. Yeah. And I'm like the competitor inside me. I was like, no, I, I, I can be one of the best guys on this team. He didn't like that answer. And what was awkward was that was the year, I think, was it Columbus and Minnesota or Columbus and Nashville. I forget who came in with what, but there was an expansion draft that, that summer. And he protected me from the expansion draft. Now my contract was up, so he, he had to qualify me, but he protected me from the expansion draft and then didn't qualify me. So let me become a free agent. So it's like he purposely screwed me. Like I, I was like, Mike, well, why, if you didn't want me, Leave me unprotected for the expansion draft. I guarantee I'm getting picked up. Yeah. He made it look, I, I don't know. He made it look like I did something wrong in New York. And that, so that pissed me off because 
it hurt my value so much so that that's the year I end up signing with the Senators uh, late because teams were like questioning, well, why did he do that? Like, what's the yeah. problem with this player? And so it took me a few years to kind of shake that because people still were asking questions. But going to a team like Ottawa and being able to play and having guys like Jacques Martin and Marshall Johnson, you know, endorse me moving forward was huge because Marshall Johnson, um, when my tenure came to an end in, in Ottawa, which, you know, was just a year in and then two games the next year, he said, listen, you can be a seven defenseman for us and wait for injury or I can waive you. And he goes, I already know there's two teams out there that will take you. Okay. And I said, uh, I said, well, Marshall, what, what are you wanting from me? He goes, I want you to tell me what you want. Do you want to sit here in Ottawa and be a role player or a healthy scratch for most of the nights? Or do you want to go play somewhere that's going to use you? I said, well, I'd like to go play somewhere that's going to use me. He goes, well, perfect. He goes, I'm going to put you on waivers. And he said, uh, good luck to you. And Marshall was great. He said, you know, you did what you needed to do when you came here. We've got young defensemen now. We've got healthy guys. It's time to move on from you. But he's like, he wanted to help me get my next gig. And he did. He told me the Boston Bruins were one of the teams. And sure enough, they're the ones who claim me the next day. Yeah, that I mean, that's all you want is respect and honesty, and uh, it's mutually beneficial for both parties. So that's that's good to hear. At least the exit from Ottawa was uh, was a good one. Yeah, it was great. Honestly, I've, I have no, no complaints about my time in Ottawa. Marshall treated me fantastic. The training staff was great. The coaching staff was great. Jacques was fair to me. So I, I I've always cheered for them. And the uh, final question on Ottawa, I have to ask because it was training camp together. You get Zdeno Chara, and at that point, he's an unknown. Like, you saw Zdeno Chara literally at the, the very beginning of what was a Hall of Fame career. Like, what was your initial impression of him? Well, what's funny is he and I played together in New York. And oh, so, right. yep. yeah, so we had spent a whole year playing together with the Islanders, and we had par- been partners a number of times. And um, so I knew Z very well. You knew? You could yeah. tell that early, really? Well, I knew very well what he could be, but yep. couldn't t- like obviously nobody saw that he was going to have the longevity, and nobody, and I don't think anybody saw that he was going to be able to add any of that offense to his game. Yeah. I mean, you saw this mountain of a man, and you mm-hmm. knew okay, especially back then, like the rules were different. How the hell are you going to get around a guy like Zidane Chara? <laughs> you can just if he can can opener you from a zone away. Yeah, <laughs> like honestly. I- you know crazy. the McDonald's commercials with the mini guys and they got the long stick? Yeah. That was- <laughs> it was awesome. But Z was a quiet guy in New York, a really hard worker, uh, a, a quality dude. And so when Ottawa made the trade and Z came in, you know, obviously I was able to welcome him in along with some of the, the Czech players that knew him as well, Slovaks. And I just knew, I'm like, this guy's going to be, he's going to be a powerhouse here, especially under Jacques Martin initially. Because Jacques' defensive strategies and his attention to detail all over the ice was incredible. And Z is very analytical brain. Like, he's always looking to retain more information and learn more all the time. And I just knew, I was like, this guy's going to soak up this crap. He's going to do awesome here. And because, honestly, Jacques Martin was one of the best coaches I ever had as far as X's and O's are concerned. Jacques could have used a little work on his people skills. There's... (laughs) No doubt. I think he would admit that. But the X's and O's of the game were, I mean, he had that on lockdown. So when you get a guy like Chara who occupies, you know, half of the defensive zone and he's also in a system that's going to help him defensively with the forwards playing hard where he can be big and physical. And then obviously, look, he added offense to his game. So it was a lot of fun watching the evolution of Zidane Chara going from just a big physical guy to an absolutely dominant NHL defenseman. Hope you're enjoying our conversation with Jamie. We'll get right back to it. But first, a word from our friends at the Glebe Central Pub. The GCP. I love it. Yeah, nice, Ross. I can't wait to get back there. Uh, In the last episode, I gave one of my favorite menu items. I'm going to give another menu item here. That's going to be what I'm going to do throughout the offseason here because you've got to check out GCP. And this is one of my top ones. I've talked about it before. It's still on the menu the buffalo chicken wrap. Anytime I'm looking to get a quick snack in, I love wraps. You get the buffalo chicken in there. You get the spicy chicken and all the veggies in there. That's what I recommend. I had it last time I was there. So check out the buffalo chicken wrap at the Glebe Central Pub. And they also have so many fun interactive 
things going on at the Glebe Central Pub from trivia nights. And then you can even play darts while you're in there. You know, have a few, have some fun there. I mentioned live music as well. Like, you're never alone at the Glebe Central Pub. You're always amongst friends there. It's in the heart of the Glebe, 779 Bank Street. Make sure you let them know Locked On Senators sent you. The shuttle bus is coming back for the Senator season. There's a golf tournament coming up in the fall as well. So stay tuned for more information on all of that. You can also find them on Instagram, Glebe Central Pub. You can also find them on Twitter. Make sure you're following along. And again, let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. We will see you at the Glebe Central Pub on October 14th for the Sens home opener before or after. We'll be on the shuttle on the way to the game. We love our friends at the Glebe Central Pub. So go check them out, 779 Bank Street. And make sure you let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. All right, now back to more with Jamie Rivers. Another guy you got to watch the evolution of, uh, he was in St. Louis a long time now, an Ottawa senator, a senator is Vladimir Tarasenko. Jamie, what, what can you tell Sens fans uh, about Tarasenko from what you've seen him? Give, give us a scouting report. Well, yeah, it's been a long road, right? Like, I remember when, when Vladdy came into St. Louis as a rookie, and, I mean, he's a very dynamic talent. He, he's, again, he's, he's a lot like an Alfredson. He's got, you know, the big legs, powerful strike, protect the puck, can shoot the puck. Now, there's differences in the players, for sure, but I'm just saying the way they're physically built. Right. And so he's got the ability to break away two hard strides, and he can pull away from almost anybody in the NHL. Uh, he's got a great shot. He's got great vision on the power play. He's got great finishing ability. I, I think that for Vladdy, the challenge at this point of his career is, can he still evolve his game? Because the body does start to slow down. So the two hard strides and breaking away from everybody might take you three or four now. I mean, and, and getting that shot off as quick as he used to, it might take a little bit longer. You might have to get a little more savvy out on the ice. And I think... I think this is almost a perfect situation for Vladdy. I, I think, you know, things got, things went south here in St. Louis towards the end of it. He had the trade request. Then his agent and him, you know, had, uh, had not so nice things to say about the medical staff here. And he was ticked off that he wasn't the captain. And, you know, all the things he shouldn't have been worried, worrying about, he was worried about. And so it kind of went sour for him here and then last year wasn't a great year in new york and there were some of the reports from rangers people staff and players that i know over there said you know it got testy at times he's Hmm. a little difficult to deal with sometimes but that was vladdy i mean that's kind of his personality it's not that he's difficult to deal with but he's a very competitive guy and when things aren't going exactly the way he wants he kind of deflects that frustration to those around him and so it's perceived as you know, maybe for lack of better words, not a bad teammate, but tough to be around sometimes. Right. And I think that that's where he can still mature is realizing that even though he's pissed off or he's frustrated, like you can't lash out at teammates. You can't lash out at the coaching staff or show the frustration. Um, And I think that that's going to be important for Vladdy to kind of dial it in this year, because you guys have a, a really, really good, young, talented team with, they're, they're close. You know, I, I know Brady could chuck very well. And, you know, Brady is, is, is so high on the team that you guys have up there in Ottawa. And he's, you know, obviously he's at the forefront of it. He's, he's the captain and he's the guy. So it's his locker room. And I'm just anxious to see how Vladdy blends with the locker room. It might, honestly, guys, it might be the best thing ever for mm-hmm. Vladdy because when he was here, he became, he was the big dog on campus. And so, you know, your voice is always heard. Yep. He got traded to the Rangers and all of his buddies were the Panarins and all the older guys. And so, you know, it's kind of a dynamic where you, you get into the room and you feel like, oh, I'm fine here. And it's already this, like a click almost, eh? Yeah, exactly. This is going to be different yep. because I don't know how many guys Vladdy actually knows on this team. And one. Zoom. One. He plays oh, computer yeah. games with Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> of course they do. Of course yeah. they do. So that's going to be different too. I've been in that situation, rolling into a locker room where you don't know everybody and you're kind of like, I need to take my time here, dip my toes in the water before I'm worried about anything else. And in that time, I think he'll be focused mostly on hockey. And let's be honest, he's in a prove it contract. Yeah. He's got to do something. He doesn't have the multi-year deal. He doesn't have the security of four or five year deal. He's got a one year deal on a team that can help him a lot for contracts moving forward. So I think that you're going to get – I think you'll get the best version of Vladdy out there this year. 
Yeah, I'm really excited to see that. And obviously with Tim Stutzla becoming the player he is, it almost feels like a natural connection. Is there a centerman that maybe Tarasenko excelled with the most in St. Louis or a style of player that you think he'd be best fit with? Uh, you know what? He never really had like a steady, steady centerman here in St. Louis. I think that that's one of the things that the team here tried to do a lot. Like they went out and they got Paul Stasny and they thought that would be a perfect mix for him. Uh, then Ryan O'Reilly, there was an experiment there with Ryan O'Reilly and Vladimir Tarasenko. He played very well with Robert Thomas here. Yep. You know, young, great speed, a lot like Stutzla. Stutzla has better finish than Robert Thomas does. Uh, but they both see the ice very well. So, I, look, Vladdy's a, an elite talent. He just has to figure out how to play with the guys around him, and they have to figure out how to play with him. These guys are smart. They're some of the best in the league for a reason. They'll figure out a way to make it work. And I think your power play, when you look at your power play, you're going to – it's a good problem and a bad problem all at the same time. The bad thing is that somebody's going to be pissed off because they're not getting enough yeah. time power play. The good news is that you guys are going to have two great power play units. So that's up to the coaching staff to manage that. If they can do a good job of that, then everybody everybody feels like they're getting their little their little piece of the pie. They're happy at that point. Right, because, I mean, even uh, Josh Norris coming back, he's that left lefty one-timer spot, and I feel like that's probably where Tarasenko likes to be. Is that where he typically is on the power play? Yeah, it's weird. I, and I was talking to a couple of guys two days ago, three days ago, and I, he likes to set up in that one-timer spot, but he doesn't shoot the one-timer. Oh, it's huh. it's the weirdest thing. He's more of a wrist shot guy. Eh? He's a wrist shot guy. Yeah. So it's kind of weird that he's in that spot or that he loves that spot so much. But yeah. put him hey, in look, the bumper. Hey, that, get, him, get him in the middle. Put him in the bumper Do so, or even put him on the strong side where he can just kind of cradle and shoot that puck. But he loves being in that spot. And so it'll be interesting to see, you know, how, how DJ Smith handles that, how he maneuvers his guys, who he puts there. And then again, it's who's going to be happy with it. Because if a guy gets moved out of a spot, power play's not successful, then someone's going to be sitting there not too happy. Well, that's where I think this is where the perfect kind of Claude Giroux presence of, of being kind of a veteran where you've got Brady Kachuk, obviously. Yeah. We, we see a couple of tweets resurface from like 2014 and 15 where he's talking about how unstoppable Tarasenko <laughs> is. So I'm sure a young Brady Kachuk inside is, is pretty excited with the potential of playing with him. And hey, we're excited to have you on the show. We really appreciate your insight, yeah. Jamie. And uh, just looking ahead at the schedule, December 14th, the Senators are in St. Louis. So we'll be knocking at your door before that, kind of get a lay of the land through the first part of the season but really appreciate all your insight. Great stories too. And already looking forward to our next chat. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for having me, man. And uh, call on me anytime. Stick taps to Jamie for joining us. Make sure you're following with Jamie on Twitter. Jamie rivers. 08 is where you can find his handle. Jamie rivers. Absolute beauty. All right, Pilsy. Before we wrap up today's show, we should tease what's coming Monday. Cause we've learned about Vladimir Tarasenko as a St. Louis blue. So naturally, what was he like with the New York Rangers? Yeah, and what better way to find out than a local expert that covers the team doing a daily podcast on the New York Rangers from Locked On Rangers. It's our good buddy, John Chick. So we had a great conversation with him, and uh, we're going to put a piece of our conversation where he tells us all about what he saw from Vladimir Tarasenko as a New York Ranger. So look forward to that because uh, that's the beauty of the Locked On Podcast Network, Ross, is – at our fingertips, we have uh, colleagues that cover every single team in the NHL, and we love linking up with them and getting their insight on it. And John Chick is one of one of the best. Absolutely, I say that with full confidence. Absolutely. More Sun Central Citizens next week. If you missed this one, Pat was a great guest. He joined us on Wednesday's yeah. show. And then next Friday, we're going to have Scott Wheeler on to discuss the Senators prospect world. He is boots on the ground right now at the uh, Summer Showcase ahead of the World Juniors. So we'll get some Oscar Pedersen conversation going with him. And we're going to make him rank his top five Senators prospects. So stay tuned for all that. And we're also going to have to, I know it sounds strange, we're going to have to give him a pat on the back. Usually it's contentious. Usually it's us being like, hey, why do you hate our favorite players? But well, we talked about the redraft he put out from 2020, Pilsy. Timmy Superstar, number one. Jake Sanderson, number two. So we're going to have to let him know that uh, we appreciate that. here. Yeah, in I mean, fair to say he got that right. So you, you got to give him credit where credit's due. So that's coming up next Friday. Great week ahead. We also have our second episode of the Ring of Honor. Amazing feedback on that with our good friend at Lings Martian. You can go find that and shout out Doodling Daryl. The graphics look phenomenal. I almost am happy that we got to do the first one without it 
So you can see just how important the community is to help build this show as well, because that was a bare bones. You know, I just literally made a table in Google Docs and was like, here you go. Not my first table that I've made there either. But for the sake of the graphics of the show, it looks amazing. So go follow Doodling Daryl. Check out his store, that Zoob shirt that I was wearing in the first Ring of Honor. You got to have that. It's a must-have for every set. poster. We got so many posters. He, he's, the, he's the best. There's no, there's no way around it. He's the best. The best. So make sure you're showing him some love as well. And we would like to say we love you. That's as well. Uh, my birthday wish. You close your eyes. And I'm just thankful that, uh, that so many of you ride with us every day. Pilsy, I'm almost shocked. The numbers haven't even dropped. And we are like 100 days removed from Sense Hockey. And we're like 60 days until Sense Hockey. So it really does mean a lot to us that you guys continue to follow the show, be our everydayers, and check in on the Ottawa Senators. And I feel like our, our most, con- not contentious, but our most commented things this summer was the fruit debate. <laughs> yes. And which video games Zub and Tarasenko are playing. We had a ton of replies there. So I love the engagement. We really appreciate it. Sense fans, you truly are the best. And uh, we we will continue to um, be inspired by you guys joining us each and every day. Yeah, honestly, we're, uh, we said this a bunch, but we are humbled that uh, there's so many passionate Sense fans out there that uh, follow along with the show. So we can't thank you enough. Those are our final thoughts. We'll leave it at that for today. Have an amazing weekend, everybody. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators Podcast, your team every day.